Let's view our hiking trails, a 277-mile footpath that traces from Duluth uh, to Canada along Minnesota's northern shore. 82 campsites dot the trail. This video outlines a 40-mile trek I made with two sons and other Hammock Forums members. So plan A for our adventure was to meet uh, Bill and Jerry at uh, Gooseberry Falls at about 1 o'clock in the afternoon on Friday. Um, but we had to shift to plan B, which involved us getting uh, up here rather later. So uh, we went to the Split Rock Lighthouse uh, State Park and uh, left the car, packed up the packs, and then came up to the trail. By the time we got to the Superior Hiking Trail, um, it was within ooh, half an hour of sunset. It was on the wrong side of the half an hour of sunset. So uh, we walked down the trail a little bit and then we stealthed. So this is Quantum Cat. He's been uh, hammock camping with me the last four years or so. Uh, he and his brother were responsible for keeping us in campfires uh, this trip, and they did a great job. So here we are, campsite number one. Tell us about it. Uh, well, there are each each campsite has its unique little personality quirks. Uh, this place, you got to check your stuff for slugs. Quite a few friendly slugs around. Wanted to make friends. Did you make friends with them? I, I, I made several friends. Up, up close and personal? Up close and personal, right there in my shoes. All right. <laughs> I need to check my shoes. So this is a heberphonetic lab hamster, Quantum Cat's younger brother. He's been hammocking for four years as well. Uh, so when you find a pair of tree huggers left at the uh, Kennedy Creek uh, campsites, uh, they're his. Most of the friends I've made here have had wings, and they really just wanted me for my blood. From there was about a two and a half mile stroll uh, along uh, an old logging uh, railroad, it was called. Uh, gently sloping up, uh, a lot of wet spots along the way. It was a nice way to start the morning. I had coordinated with Bill and had agreed that we would meet here at the, uh, I believe it's the, uh, the Christmas Tree Ridge uh, campsite. So uh, we got up early in the morning, packed up, came down here. It was about an hour's hike from uh, where we had stealthed. And uh, now we have made our breakfast and uh, are uh, cool in our heels, so to speak, uh, awaiting the arrival of Bill and Jerry. Connected in late morning and started hiking north. Uh, we had a beautiful day. Highs were around 80s. Uh, had vistas uh, to the west uh, and to the east. We'd often stop to have a look-see and uh, maybe take some pictures. Uh, the uh, trail itself had been suggested uh, by Bill, who's got a lot of experience up here. Very grateful for the help that he's provided. Um, after connecting, we uh, moved on up until we found a place to have our lunch. There was no particular hurry. Uh, we had all afternoon to get to our next campsite, uh, which was uh, two, three miles away, a little bit of an elevation, and then the down dip. It was the uh, fault line uh, campsite. So we pitched our hammocks. Uh, made camp generally. Uh, Jerry was carrying a pack that he had made himself, wonderfully light little piece of uh, work, and so we just settled in. We had a long afternoon and evening, big campfire. It was wonderful. We were only four miles from the trailhead, so we had a leisurely morning and made our way. Uh, we were tracking the Beaver River, more or less. I thought that river was supposed to be flooded. <laughs> This is Jerry. He drove up from Galesburg, Illinois. He's a do-it-yourselfer par excellence. Uh, really glad to have him along on this hike. In fact, he took most of the pictures from this first couple of days in the video, so thanks, Jerry. Our objective was the Beaver Bay Trailhead. Uh, we got there around lunchtime. Bill started home. Uh, Jerry helped with car shuttling up at the Tetagusha State Park and dropped us at the Silver Bay Trailhead before heading home. Frankie and Mr. Green showed up and we agreed to meet at the Bear Lake campsite. And they started off from Beaver Bay while we started off from Silver Bay. The hiking was hot and muggy, but the views were beautiful of Bean Lake and then of uh, Bear Lake. Uh, it's reputed to be one of the uh, finest campsites in, uh, on the whole trail and certainly was beautiful. Shug had warned us, though, that it would be difficult to find hanging sites, and that was no lie. So we're at the Bear Lake uh, campsite now. It looks like I'm all wet. That's because I am. After a hard day's hike, it was uh, quite inviting just to jump in and cool off. I have to say that uh, finding hanging spots here is as hard as it's ever been. I'll show you some of these marvelous sites that we have uh, to choose from. It's lake, fire pit, uh, the tent pad, room for a tent, and then look at all that vegetation, all closed in. So where do we find our hammocks? Well, there's a pair of trees right here. 
sun number ones inside taking a well-earned nap. You can see up beyond there, that's where I've hung mine. Let's go. Sun number two is way back there, also having a nap. So we're, here's where I found to hang my bridge, over some rocks, which is uh, suboptimal. But I tell you what, clamoring around in here, getting this uh, tarp hung in the hammock hum was, uh, was quite a challenge. So it did rain a lot that night, but we were all buttoned up and stayed dry. The morning when we set off, it was drizzly, so we put on the pack covers. Uh, but before we left the area, we stopped to take a photo over Bear Lake. Oh, here, that's a <laughs> movie. Doesn't have the, the LED flashing. No, it does. Okay. Yes, here, you're just filming us. Camera. Okay, we'll Hi. try. So it helps to hit the timer button and not the movie button when you're trying to take a photo. Uh, this here's Franke. He's a transplant to Minnesota. It's the first time up the Superior Hiking Trail. And we got here Mr. Green, Minnesota native. He's been up here many times. He's a fond of knowledge about these trails. It was great to have both these guys along. Again? He'll try that again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we had some climbing to do to earn our lunch. We started at 1,200 feet, then went up to 1,500 feet, then down to 1,000 feet, and then all the way back up to 15, 1,600 feet at Round Mountain, and then at the Mount Trudy of Shug fame. Ah! One, two, three. We climbed Mount Trudy, our heartstrings were a tug. We climbed Mount Trudy, but we climbed it missing Shug. <laughs> and then we had to come down. At least it's only 60 something degrees in this humid, not uh, 80 degrees. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, 80 degrees would be tough. Whoa! Whoa. That didn't work. You okay? I underestimated my strength at the backpack. Oh, the dark side? Yeah, I did a lot too. So coming down to Tetagush, we encountered the drain pipe, which was a lot of descent in a very short period of time. Come on. I, I changed my mind. I don't want to take the ring to Mordor. Never mind. I'm, I'm going home now. <laughs> so we pulled into the Tetagoosh State Park where I'd left my car. We did another car swap so that we could end the trail at the Finland Reckland Center and then pushed on. Uh, saw the Baptism River, had some views. We were heading towards the uh, the Kennedy Camp sites a few miles past Tetagoosh, and we had a little weather. So that's the uh, Baptism River Falls. That is awesome. I feel like my photo shoot. Now we're on top of this bluff. That's Lake Superior. And uh, I think we're all dead. <laughs> We had no sooner gotten our tarps up than the heavens opened, and we had storms for hours. The winds blew strongly, the trees shook. Uh, in the morning, it was nice to be dry and still off the ground. Set off in the morning a little soggy, but under bright blue skies. Had a little climbing to do for lunch, and then the big question of the day was how much of the uh, passage across the beaver dam was washed out, and how wet would we get? So, lunchtime on Tuesday. Here we are at the peaks of Section 13. Name like that, we're expecting alien visitation, I think. We're higher than the birds right now. <laughs> All right. Flying under us. Mr. Green had heard that the boardwalk across the Beaver Dam was out. We checked at Tetagush and they said it, it was passable, but we might get a little wet. This is what we've got to get across. Happily over there I see boardwalk. Perhaps once we get over there it'll be all right. I don't know. Oh! Lord! Yep! Oh, it's mucky. Oh, my 
Lord. Oh, yeah. Oh, mama. All right. Look at that. Can't touch these acrobatic skills. Woo. How do I get up there? You jump. We've got a pool going on. Who goes in first? I'm going with Green. He's got one trekking pole. <laughs> You guys are already doing better than I did. And the first one crosses. That wasn't too bad, huh? Yeah. Refreshing these two. Hey, at least all the mud is off my boots now. <laughs> <laughs> I actually feel fantastic right Woo! now. Oh. From here, it was a few miles left to camp at the Luskin Creek uh, campground. Uh, the going was relatively flat, relatively wet. Uh, it was a nice stroll. We had some views of uh, flowers right by a road that was near the campsite. All in all, it was a nice end to the day. We had a quiet, cool night. Heard some wolves in the background. In the morning, it was an easy uh, two and a half mile stroll um, back out to the cars where we crossed the east branch of the Baptism River first. That was, that was amazing. I'll tell you what, though, in the past four days, it's totally given me a different impression on Minnesota for the past like nine months. <laughs> and that pretty well sums it up. This is a special corner of Minnesota with exhilarating climbs and surprising views. We'll be back.